here's an example. I'm going to pretend you're my students for a minute, and I'm going to show you how I use this in the classroom. Most of the time, well, I always use scales to introduce new content, but I don't teach from it every day because you will still spend a majority of your class time at grade level content. You want to be able to differentiate, especially at the beginning when everybody is lower, and maybe for your higher students who are just going to learn this in two days when you planned it for two weeks right? They're going to need something else to do. So it's still really helpful to have that plan of differentiation, but you're not going to put this on the board every day. You might have it on your wall. You might refer to it every day. I usually say, remember, this is what we're working on today. This is where we're working at today. But that's like a five second just reminder. I always start out though by explaining the levels of the scales, at least two or three of them, three, two, maybe one. And I take my kids through it in order and kind of see where they at. This is a quick way to pre-assess. It's informal, but you could have them do it on a piece of paper and say, let's see how far you can get. We're going to learn something new today. So our standard for seventh grade is that you can compute unit rates with ratios of fractions. There's a lot of words in there that you might be confused about. That sentence might seem overwhelming, but we're going to break it down. And I'm going to show you that you already know a lot of these things. And we're going to think about what you know already and build on that. So don't worry about that. That's for the teacher. <laughs> this is what you want to focus on. Unit rates, ratios, fractions. Let's take a look at some examples of those things, how we can break them down, and how much you already know. So we're going to start at level one, because one is the easiest. Sixth grade, fifth grade. These are things that you learned already. If you didn't master it already, that's okay. We're going to repeat. We're going to review. We're going to make sure that you do well this year. But we're going to work backwards for a few minutes to see what you already remember. So let's take a look at level one. If I gave you a story problem, Mike ran 1.6 kilometers in 10 minutes during track practice. What are some things you already know? You know this is a decimal. So you have a whole number and then kind of a fraction, part of a kilometer. You probably already know how kilometers relate to meters and the metric system, because those are things you worked on third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, maybe sixth grade too. So you might have an idea of how to convert those. 10 minutes, that's a measurement of time, pretty easy. Anyone remember how time relates to seconds or hours or days? So you already know how we're going to work with some of these two things. Here's the question. If 1,600 meters is about a mile, how long would it take Mike to run a mile? Right now, get out a piece of paper. I want you to try this problem. So right away, what are students going to do? Well. If your students are higher performing, you're going to let them run with it and see what they do. If your students are really low and you know they're probably still going to need your hand to walk through this, you might go back and say, okay, well, what do we know for sure? What do you see happening in the problem? Do you notice that 1,600 meters is the same thing? Anyone remember those conversions? It's the same thing as 1.6 kilometers. So I made this so easy on you because you just have to make one conversion. And then you're going to realize, oh, I didn't really do anything, except remember that it's the same. We're not changing anything with the distance. Let's look at the time. Well, this is the same as a mile, so we have another equivalent here, right? So I can think 1.6 kilometers is the same thing as 600 meters, is the same thing as about a mile. So we're looking at the same distance here. How long would it take Mike to run a mile? Well, we only have one number that tells us the time. What is that? Tell me if you know. Ten minutes. Do we need to change anything? So did I actually have to do anything? The story gives us the answer. All I had to remember was how to convert metric units. Who thinks they can do that? Write your answer on the paper. Everybody tell me what's the answer. Okay, you just did the first problem. How easy was that? Okay, now we're going to step it up to the next level. In the next problem, you're going to have more numbers to change. I made it really easy the first time. 
Let's see what happens now. At the second level, Mike ran 1.6 kilometers in 10 minutes. Okay, we just talked about that. We remember that is the same thing as 600 meters and about a mile. Okay, we just reviewed that. How many meters per second did he run? Mm -hmm. Now we have to change one aspect. Maybe two. What do you think? What are we changing here? We're going to change kilometers to meters. Do we already know how to do that? You do. We just did it. And we just noticed that it's the same thing as 1,600 meters. We know that. Easy. How many meters per second? What else do we have to change? Time. Minutes to seconds. Time. Minutes to seconds. Hmm. What do we know about how minutes relate to seconds? How many seconds go into a minute? Tell me if you know. 60. Okay. So, but there's 10 minutes, not one minute. 60, what would we have to do with the 60 seconds in one minute? Times 10. 60 times 10. What do you do with that? So, depending on how high functioning your students are, you would either let them maybe figure that out on their own, at their table, with a group, with a partner, or you'd be holding their hand and walking them through the problem so they can kind of see the difference. Easy, we're getting a little harder, a little harder, because we have to change more things and pay attention to more conversions. How many meters per second did he run? Well, you have to figure he has 1,600 meters divided by, what do we say, 600? Yeah, 600 minutes. That's about two times and two-thirds of a time, 400 left over 600. So about 2.5. 2.7. You can make it a decimal, you can make it a fraction. Two and two thirds. Two and two thirds meters for one second. So that took a little more work, but is that still something you could do? Do you remember making those conversions last year? Do you remember learning about seconds, minutes, meters, kilometers? That's called unit rates when we divided it into one minute or one second. That was the unit rates that you learned about last year. Now we're going to do that again. We're going to use some multiplication and division to create a unit rate, except this time we're not using decimals. We're not using whole numbers. We're using fractions. Another element of difficulty, this is what we're working on this year. I don't expect you to know how to do that yet. I'll be helping you to do that. Anyone think they can do it already? Let's try it out. Here's the kind of problem I'll be giving you this year that we'll work on together. Mike ran three quarters of a kilometer in one sixth of an hour. Hmm. How many meters per hour did he run? So what do we have to change? We're going to make another conversion of kilometers to meters. We're going to have to think about how to change a fraction to a whole number to get the unit rate, right? We're going to be changing the hour. Oh, still an hour. But... Are we going to keep the hour as a fraction number? Or do we need to change it to a whole number to make the unit rate? Hmm. How many meters per hour did he run? I guess we could leave it an hour. Hmm. So, give your kids a minute. They're going to think of an answer. I have to think about what my answers were. I have them up there somewhere. in one full kilometer? Tell me if you know. A thousand. No problem. Three quarters of a thousand, 750 meters. We need our conversion in meters, so we got our meter number, 750. Per hour, I don't have to change this. I could say in a six of an hour, but I do have to change it to a whole number to be a unit rate. So I have to change one more thing. How am I going to change a fraction into a 1? I have 760, oh sorry, 750 meters in one sixth of an hour. How am I going to change that to one whole hour? I'm going to multiply by 6. Okay, so whatever that is, you will get the big meter number per one whole hour because they have to have it as a unit rate, which means that 1 is on the bottom for the time. And you might decide to stop there. If your kids were totally lost, you're like, 
I'm not going to worry about four. Let's move on to today's lesson. This is what we're working on now. Do you see how all the skills you already learned are going to help you this year? This is how we're going to apply them. We're going to remember conversions. We're going to remember the time. We're going to remember the distances. We're going to remember the metric system. We're going to think about how decimals apply to fractions. You already know so much that's going to help you this year. Let's dive in and get started. And you kind of feel your kids out based on how they do that, but it's an excellent pre-assessment activity that tells you how you're going to plan the rest of your unit. Because if you have a lot of kids that like couldn't even convert, like the decimal on kilometers, whoa, you need to back up and maybe go back to fifth grade with that for at least a day or two. Make sure they understand those decimal conversions or the metric system or whatever they didn't get yet. Spend a day or two on that and then move forward. But this kind of activity is just so great for saving you time because if you can spend the first 20 minutes of a new learning goal, figuring out what they already know, and building their confidence that they already have knowledge to work with, they're just gonna stay with you. They're like, okay, she's totally like reminding me that I know some of these things, I can do some of these things, and she's gonna walk me through it. 